What's going on guys? This is Oliver, formerly from Response AI and a few other software tools that I've since built and exited. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the six levels of building profitable software. So we're just gonna start with level one, which is outsourcing to a team. Now this is the expensive but strategic option for a non-technical solo founder who has loads of money, um, not much time, and doesn't really want to start building their own tools or learn how to build their own software. At this level, you abstract the entire development process by delegating it to an external company, and your role shifts from maker to manager. Now, the founders build versus buy calculus, so the driver here is pure business leverage. Basically, instead of you know outsourcing um, the marketing or outsourcing the um, creation of YouTube videos for the product. You are outsourcing the most expensive and most time consuming part of the software, which is actually building it. So you, excuse me, can focus on outsourcing, um, no, sorry, focus on doing things like customer development and market validation. Now, the validation blindness risk of outsourcing to a team to build your software. The greatest risk is that they build the software and you have no idea what is going on. So a technical founder can mitigate this by outsourcing only tactical tasks like building APIs or, you know, building backends, etc., while personally code reviewing the freelancer's work to ensure quality. So a non-technical founder, however, is validation blind. You can provide wireframes or ideas or suggestions, but you have no way to assess the quality or security or scalability of the code that, that they've built for you. And you've, you've inherited 100% of the technical debt and risk and you paid thousands of dollars for it. So how to manage a team, define the scope, mandate the stack, so mandate what tools they use and the process they build, demand visibility through project management tools like Jira that they'll probably be using, and protect your inte uh, intellectual property. So if you have an idea that you think is really special, um, make sure that they sign NDAs on that and um, service level agreements. Now, level two, is God mode, crazy, crazy maniac stuff, right? This is the manual coding from scratch. So writing every line of code by hand, guided by only your brain and what you know about code, right? Now the critical analysis for this, this approach is ridiculous. The goal of a SaaS product is not to have the most elegant or minimal or human code. It is to solve a customer's problem so that they pay you money, right? Level two forces you to reinvent the wheel by spending hundreds of hours building solved problems. You are not smart if you solve user authentication. Someone did it years ago. If you build subscription billing, someone did it years ago and you can use it today. And team management or back ends or that kind of thing, someone did it years ago and these features are commodities and they don't make you smart to waste time on them. And while this offers absolute control. The control is an illusion because you're trading time to market for technical purity, right? It's a trade that almost always leads to business failure because the cognitive load of managing every detail is insane. And I just don't recommend it because you're going to run into bugs that you can't avoid, that you don't know how to solve, and it just takes ages. The only actionable advice if you are in level two is just try and, try and graduate from it. So never build an MVP this way. It's going to take years. Never, you know, um, never do stuff in production unless it's really surgical optimizations. And for learning, sure, if you want to learn how to build things from scratch for this, you know, for the sake of a hobby, then do so. But if you're trying to build the software to make money, just don't manually code, guys. It takes too long. Now, frameworks and boilerplates. So, this is the industry standard um, for a lot of solo founders, and it's a recommended level. I recommend it. I use it myself. It involves using pre-built code to handle common tasks, right? To allow you to focus on the main focus, allow you to focus on the main product that you're building. There's two layers. There's frameworks like React, Django, Rails, that kind of thing. That's a structure that provides a conceptual model. So in other words, a framework like Phoenix solves a developer's architectural problem by providing good structure for the code. And React, for example, is just easy to use. It's easy to read. The founder takeaway is that this is good, but it's still time consuming. You get a structure, but you still go back to level two. You still have to code things from scratch. Now, level three um, B, number two, is the SaaS boilerplate. So ship fast, SaaS Pegasus, make a kit, open SaaS, that kind of thing. 
This is a complete starter kit built on top of a framework and it moves beyond structure to provide ready to use production grade functionality. So things like user authentication, uh, Stripe integration, database setup, admin dashboards. And this is the single greatest accelerator for a solo founder because a mature boilerplate represents community work, uh, community reviews, hundreds of hours of, you know, complex and non-differentiating features. And it allows you to, you know, ship really quickly. Now, the con of this level is that basically you can design your way out of this con and this problem is that all of the boilerplates look the same and, and act the same. So you can just take the boilerplate and put it into cursor and just start building on top of it. And that's OK. But remember that you are accepting a generic looking tool and that, that looks like thousands of others for the sake of speed. But you can just obviously design out of that. So you can buy a boilerplate for like $100 and then choose the stack that you want. So for example, you can buy React boilerplates, you can buy Next.js boilerplates, you can buy Python, whatever it may be. Then focus on the core loop. So what is the one unique feature that solves your customer's problem? Now, there's obviously loads. I'm not going to just go through all of these, but you've got Shipfast, Pegasus, uh, Make a Kick Gravity, OpenSAS, all of these are different pricing and they sort of like fit where you are at different points and they all use different frameworks. So Pause this, guys, if you want to have a look into it. Now, level four is the augmented coder. So the core concept here is that you are auto-completing code um, and it's damn slow. This is the first step, though, into AI, and it's defined by tools like GitHub Copilot. So these tools are context unaware on a project level. So in other words, they suggest whole lines or entire functions based on the current file and the current line you're on instead of understanding your entire code base. And basically, there was um, a study that found that this actually slowed people down by up to 19 percent developers feel more productive because ai reduces the cognitive load so less brain power but a randomized controlled trial this year found that experienced developers were slowed down by this but, but by you know ai um, augmented coders and for a SaaS founder this is the hidden cost of validating plausibly wrong code so if it you know gives you a suggestion for a line and it's wrong it's going to take you ages to fix the AI fails because it doesn't build on your business logic. It doesn't build on understanding security. It doesn't understand novelty and it struggles with things like custom libraries or your special code that other people have built for you, whatever it may be. The developer's cognitive load isn't reduced. It's just shifted from writing code to debugging and like uh, dealing with reviewing those tasks that the AI coder has written. An actionable strategy is just to not do this. So it's good for writing little tests or simple loops, but it's terrible for building production grade apps. Now, my favorite way to code is the AI native developer. So LLM powered IDEs. Now, this is the repo wide context or vibe coding. It's the AI native environment where the AI is no longer just an auto completer, but a collaborative partner. And the key technical leap here is context. These tools ingest your entire ecosystem of code, your entire repository, allowing you to vibe code using natural language and the questions and things that you say to the AI. It is based off the context of all of your files. Again, as you guys know, for technical founders, I recommend Cursor. And for non-technical founders who want to build quick, I recommend Lovable. But you guys can obviously pause this and see what you guys think. Now, the LLM-powered IDEs, there's a 164% speed up, but then you hit something called the production gauntlet. So the AI acts as a cognitive partner. It debugs things, it analyzes bottlenecks, and it makes you way faster. But there's also something called the vibe coding production gauntlet, which is where people who have vibe coded their SaaS reveal that sometimes there are catastrophic failures that the AI never warned them about. Catastrophic failures, hard to say. Um, the AI never warned them about, and then um, they run into massive issues later on. Now, this is obviously God mode, level six, right? Autonomous agent swarms. So this level shifts from an assistant in number five to an autonomous agent that acts to achieve a goal or multiple agents. You don't pair program with some agent. You delegate tasks to it like an employee. Now, Devin was like the first AI software engineer 
and cursor v2 agents is like a much more sort of in my opinion a much better um, option for this the most advanced and experimental systems are swarms of builders that offer a builder tester refactor thing um, and build entire software from scratch as if it's you know a load of employees it's as if you've bought a team now there was a disaster with this sort of like agent swarm process, right? So in 2025, an agent, which was um, Replit's agent, actually deleted an entire um, production database. So in other words, um, the AI panicked and after a series of errors, ignored the human command to stop coding and deleted pretty much everything. Now, the post-mortem revealed that this was not a rogue AI or anything like that, but a profound, profound failure from the human side. The agent was given direct right access to the live production database. And admin level permissions like principle of least privilege. So, for example, you know, no one should be making um, changes to the back end because it's so dangerous. There was no human in the loop to approve that destructive command. So the actionable strategy here is never give agents production keys. This is non-negotiable. An agent should never have unsupervised right access to a live system, and you should always review. Now, from vibe to live. So the primary risk for a solo founder is not that AI can't build an app, but that it can't build a production-ready app. So pure AI coding gets you maybe 60% there, but then real subscribers, real people, start using the product and everything breaks in ways the AI never warned you about. And this is the founder's gauntlet. So you've got things like the Stripe and billing um, catastrophe. So this is a hypothetical catastrophe, right? The Vibe, you Vibe coded a Stripe setup and the integration worked perfectly in test mode. The reality is that in production, actual payments were bouncing. The AI generated code had no concept of webhook validation, item potency, or proper error handling for decline cards, for example. And it created accounting chaos where subscription changes, upgrades and downgrades, that kind of thing, triggered three billing events and then destroyed revenue tracking. So it was as if three customers were subscribing to the tool dozens of times, that kind of thing, like loops of massive errors. The database scalability nightmare. So the vibe was that my dashboard was fine with 10 users. It often is. It's often fine when you're running it on a computer or a few friends are using it. But with a thousand users, every query started timing out. The AI suggested caching, which is just like a bandage over a bigger problem. And instead of solving the root cause, it started creating, you know, um, there was garbage queries. There was no pagination for the data. It was just calling loads of data at once and causing loads of problems. So what I want to talk to you guys about now is just the decision framework and the actionable playbooks that I would recommend. So playbook one is the non-technical founder. So the goal is to validate an idea with a clickable prototype. The primary level here is either to outsource, which I don't recommend, or um, level five, which is to build with code editors that are AI powered. Use Lovable to vibe code a landing page and a simple clickable prototype, and it should only solve one problem. Use this to get initial user feedback. If validation is positive, don't try and build the real product from scratch, but instead either run boilerplates or use validated prototypes and user feedback to create a detailed scope and then feed this in either to a team, which I don't recommend again, or feed it into a code editor like Cursor or agents to build from scratch. Playbook two is the non Uh, is the technical pragmatic founder. So build a secure, scalable, and production-ready MVP in the fastest, safest way. The primary level here would be level 3B, so boilerplates, mixed with level 5, which is the AI native code editors. So buy a SaaS boilerplate. This instantly solves authentication, billing, team management, backend, whatever it may be. Then use a level 5 tool like Cursor, as your cognitive partner. So use the AI to accelerate work on top of the boilerplate's solid foundation and then follow AI code review playbooks, um, which I'll put in the description. Now, playbook three is the vibe coding experimenter. So you can build a novel product from scratch at maximum speed, accepting maximum risk. So the primary level here is pure level five. So replit or cursor and vibe code your entire 
application from just a prompt. You will get to about 60% of a demoable product very quickly, and then you will hit the production gauntlet. And you must stop and manually re-architect the AI's garbage queries, insecure auth logic, and obviously broken payment handling. So if we just go back and we really um, just dive into the final decisions here. So I don't recommend outsourcing to a team. I just don't recommend it. It's too expensive. It takes too long. There's a lot of bureaucracy as well. There's a lot of problems with this um, regarding, you know, um, who owns the code and um, having to do NDAs and things like that. And then people can steal your ideas, whatever it may be. Number two is manual coding. Do not do this unless you're doing it for a hobby. Like I like manually coding just because it's like really hard and it takes me away from obviously the AI approach, but it just takes too long. I can hardly spin up like a decent looking website without help from AI because I'm not a coder from scratch. I'm a coder with AI. Number three is I do recommend boilerplates, but as long as you're going to plug the boilerplates into an AI code editor, like we talked about in playbook one. The other side is obviously the augmented coder. I just completely avoid this entirely. It's just not worth your time. Level five is the AI developer from scratch with Lovable or Cursor, and I strongly recommend this, but it is a bit faster to use a boiler co a boilerplate and then obviously plug it in, like I said. And then finally, God mode, which is the autonomous agent swarms. I'm just not there yet. I don't have the money to invest in this. I don't want to spend time in this and too many disasters like the ghostwriter disaster for the database deletion can happen when you are relying on entire agents because they can go rogue and just delete everything basically. So that is the end of my analysis on this guys. Like I said, my final process I recommend is to buy a boilerplate or start from scratch with AI native developers and go from there. Any problems at all, give me a shout. Any questions, let me know. Take care.